What if you learned of a cool feature that isn't in the current version of Olama, and then you learn that someone else implemented it? If it's not in the downloadable release yet, how do you take advantage of it? Well, that's what we're going to learn to do today. Olama is a project that's always in motion. The core maintainers do a lot of the work, but many of the biggest features come from contributors outside of the main team. Both maintainers and external contributors work on features that become PRs or pull requests on GitHub. When a pull request is tested and deemed good enough by the maintainers, it gets merged into the main Olama codebase. But until then, it exists as its own little branch of code, separate from the main project. Sometimes these PRs have that feature you would love to be able to use right now. But until you learn how to work with any PR and then build and compile, you have to wait for it to be merged and released. So let's take a look at what's involved in getting a PR deployed onto your own machine and how you can get involved in the overall approval process. If you've never done something like this before, it can be a little complicated. There are errors that may pop up, and some are critical, and others are not that important. When you don't know what you don't know, it can be especially hard to figure out how and what needs to be fixed. I'll try to break it down step by step, but I can't really cover every case. That being said, the process is generally straightforward once you understand the basics. Before working with a PR, you should first try to compile the main branch of Olama yourself. If that doesn't work, then any of the PRs will fail as well. So first, ensure you have Git installed on your machine. That's G-I-T. In addition to that, I would recommend installing the GH command line tool, which is maintained by GitHub, as it makes working with GitHub-based repos much easier. You can do everything with Git, but GH just makes some hard stuff and processes with really long command lines easier to remember and to use. You can find out more about GH at cli.github.com. Then find a suitable location on your machine to store projects from GitHub. I have a projects folder in my home directory and then code inside of that. Any of the projects I work on for my videos or for tools from a GitHub repo I use all go in that code directory. So from there, you can run gh repo clone olama slash olama. Without the gh command, we would have needed git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash olama slash olama dot git. Already, gh is a little simpler, and that's not a very complex command. This will download the entire Olama repository to your machine. Now change into that directory and we can start working with it. The next step is to ensure you have Golang installed. Golang, or just Go, is a programming language created at Google. It has become very popular because you can learn everything built into the language in less than a day. The other way of looking at that benefit is that there's nothing built in and you have to recreate the basics or find a library elsewhere that has done that for you. A lot of system level tools are written in Go, such as Olama and, and Kubernetes. But it's interesting to note that Kubernetes wasn't written in Go because it was the best tool for the job, but rather the devs of Kubernetes wanted to learn Go, and at the beginning, Kubernetes was just a hobby project to learn it on. It's gotten a, <laughs> a bit bigger since then. You can find out how to install Go for your platform at go.dev. You'll also need GCC version 11.4.0 or later installed. On Linux, it should already be there. On Mac, it comes with Xcode command line tools package. On Windows, I'm not really sure what the best way to install it is. Perhaps someone can answer that in the comments below. The Olama developer docs recommend using msys2, but I haven't spent much time with the Microsoft-based developer workflow since, well, since I worked at Microsoft in Redmond two decades ago. The developer documentation in the Olama GitHub repo goes through all the steps involved, but basically you want to run make-j5, then go build dot. I don't actually know why they recommend using dash j5, since that just tells make to use five jobs in parallel. 
It might speed up things a bit, but I would think that depends on your hardware. Now, make sure the Olama server is not running. How to stop it depends on your platform and how you installed Olama. Well, then assuming that the regular Olama isn't running, you can run dot slash Olama serve to start your Olama server. And then in another terminal window, run dot slash Olama run Llama 3.2 or whatever model you want to run. So if all that works, we know your development environment works. If Olama was already running, you may have two environments right now, and it's difficult to know which is which. That's why it's important to stop that existing server before starting a new one. Now, let's go to GitHub and discover a good PR to try. There are a lot of PRs up on the site. Sometimes the biggest challenge for the maintainer team is ensuring it works as described in all situations. You can assist by trying it in your environment and then adding your feedback to the PR in the form of a comment. Now, this is important. If you're just excited about a PR, but don't want to actually try it, adding a plus one or I need this or something like that isn't all that helpful. It can actually slow down the process. One PR that I'm excited about right now is number 6279, which introduces KV context quantization. This was created by Sam McLeod out of Australia. He built this originally in August and has maintained it ever since, hoping to get it merged into the main branch. In case that name sounds familiar, he also created GoLama, a tool I have recommended in another video. KV context quantization is a technique used to reduce the memory footprint of large language models by quantizing the context embeddings. You may remember that the GPU memory required to run any model is a combination of the needs of the model itself plus the context size. And every model from Olama starts with a context size of 2048 tokens. You can increase this by setting num underscore CTX to a larger value. But doing so means you need more memory. KV context quantization lets you quantize just the context, allowing more to fit in less memory. This becomes more and more important as models become available with larger contexts. Depending on the quantization configured, it can reduce the memory required for a given context size by half or even more. So let's go ahead and get the PR installed and try it out. First, stop the server and client currently running. Visit the page for the PR and click the code button at the top right. Here you can see the command to run is ghpr checkout 6279. Now you can run those commands again make dash j5 and then go build dot. If you scroll through the comments for this PR, there's one from Sam that says how to use it. Run olama underscore kv underscore cache underscore type equals q8 underscore zero space dot slash olama serve. This will set the kv quantization to q8 and start the server. The quantization for the context is completely unrelated to the quantization for the model. So you could still use a Q4 model with a Q8 context. Now run dot slash Olama run Llama 3.2 and you should see better use of memory with larger context sizes. Towards the top of the PR is a screenshot of GoLlama showing how much memory can be saved for different models. You should play around with that and see what kind of savings you get with your own setup. I had chatted with Sam last week about this. We all know that Q4 is the sweet spot for models meaning it's the quantization level that gives you the most benefit with minimal downside. Most folks wouldn't be able to tell the difference of the output from a Q4 model versus Q8 versus FP16 if they see the results on their own. <laughs> I know there's going to be someone who is going to add a comment saying it's an obvious difference, but they're just probably making that up. Well, with context quantization, Q8 is the sweet spot according to Sam and this results in a pretty big savings. If you find any issues with the code from this PR on your machine, you should add a comment to the PR describing the issue. Be as specific as possible about what happened, what steps you took, and what the environment looks like. Again, don't add comments that are just me too, or plus one, or when will this be merged, because those don't help anyone, and if anything, devalue the PR. 
try this process out with other PRs that look interesting. First, go back to main with git checkout main. Now notice there that I use the git command for this and not gh. Then check out the PR. Now that you see that the process is pretty easy, there's nothing stopping you from trying it on lots of other new features. If you need multiple features from multiple branches, this is a bit more difficult to do and way out of scope for this video. Sam has done a fantastic job with this PR, and it's a great example of how contributors can make a real impact on the Olama project. It can be frustrating to wait for the maintainers to merge your changes, but he has remained positive and supportive in all of his updates. And it's looking like his persistence may be paying off. Jeff, one of the founders of Olama, started commenting on it in the last few days. I hope by the time this video gets released on Thursday, it's already merged. But even if it is, the video still shows how to work with any PR. But if it isn't, let's all try it out and provide some comments to help move it along. Again, skip the plus ones and me twos and focus on specific details about your experience with this PR. Some other interesting ones to try include 5059, which adds Vulkan support. Vulkan is an alternate to Rock M and CUDA, which would add support for older cards, though newer cards would be faster with native drivers. 5872, which adds Ascend NPU support. I think it's Ascend is a line of chips from Huawei. Huawei? Huawei, I think Huawei. 5593 adds support for Intel integrated GPUs. And a lot of folks with laptops and low-end desktops have Intel iGPUs. So that would allow a lot of new folks to use Olama. 1640 adds log probes, which I think has to do with the probabilities for chosen tokens. Number 1606 adds support for grammars. And well, there are a few of those, but many of them haven't been updated for the new build process. I also like 7281, which adds some cool formatting to Olama LS. And 6938 for command completion. Oh my God, command completion would be so great to have. There are so many different PRs that look interesting to try, but every one of them needs to be thoroughly tested on every platform before getting merged and released. So I hope you will try them out in your own environment and then provide feedback in the comments. This effort on your part will help the really great PRs move closer and closer to getting merged into the product soon. And it'll help identify issues in some of the PRs that the original author might not have experienced because they didn't have the hardware. Have you tried out any interesting PRs that haven't been merged yet? If so, share them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye. I don't know if you can hear the generator in the background. We lost power all night last night because of a bomb cyclone. Lots of trees downed.